when do you get to be a child? Yes. You know, can you actually be an innocent child in a black body? You do not wear a hoodie outside, period. And it's just fear of, of a safety. So my daughters are running around the house pretending to have super soakers. And I sat them down and I said, you cannot pretend ever to have a gun. Yeah, no, I mean, I want you all to feel free to like talk and jump in. I mean, this is not like, you know, you don't have to raise your hand or anything like that. So we just jump in. I sometimes do it because I'm socially awkward yeah. and because like, <laughs> I'm a teacher. But I, know like, I know. That's what I want my students to do sometimes. So uh, raise your hand. I'll do my best not to raise my hand. Yeah. So for you all, when was the first time you realized that you needed to talk to your kids about race? I had a really good conversation recently. My daughter came home from school and just kind of out of the blue, she said, like, we learned about slavery in, in school and it made me really sad, mm -hmm. right? So it was, a, it was a great opening for a conversation mm -hmm. and just kind of led to me asking more questions. What about for you, Beth? I mean, you're, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I think out of necessity, it came probably earlier than maybe it would have had I had um, a white child. Friends at preschool would say, that's your mom, you know, when I would come and visit. Well, I mean, I remember a turning point for me in terms of how important I thought it was. Um, and that was when I watched for the first time the video of Eric Garner um, pleading for his life and saying, I can't breathe. Um, and it hit home for me, okay, this actually is happening. Um, and so I wanted, to take more of an active role in addressing some of those issues through my work, but also with my kids. It's similar that my daughter was just wondered out of nowhere from the back seat of the car, <laughs> um, why is it always on the news a white policeman shooting a black man? Mm -hmm. And she was maybe five at this. So thinking like my kid is not thinking this deeply at this point was, what about for you? He brought up the N-word one time, and so just so yeah. I was able how did he, to... How did he bring that up? He, so that happened at school, and like, I was like, okay. And when that happened at school, how did it happen? Like, did someone say he, it? Like, He what? had heard that that is just a bad, that's just a really bad word, and I was trying to contextualize it. How do you all feel when you get asked those questions? I mean, when they... I, I mean, I remember when I asked my parents, like, weird questions, they'd be like, oh, boy, okay, now I got to talk about it. You know, like, how do you all feel when you get, when your kid walks into your house and says, I heard the N-word today? When they're bringing it up, I'm like, oh, let's go, let's go, and try to bring as many different resources and make them animated as much as I can. And so I... I, I'm fortunate, but again, I, I still wish like the school system would be doing, would be, would be practicing some of this at, as well. But how do you all wrestle with or do you wrestle with living in predominantly white communities and moving in predominantly white spaces? Our son is Ethiopian and so we have a connection with the Ethiopian Community mm -hmm. Center, which has been wonderful. Yeah. Um, but we do live in a little Ballard, white Ballard bubble and um, we really struggle with, you know, not doing enough to create more racial mirrors for our son. Yeah, I feel like a hypocrite a lot of the yeah. time, honestly, oh, yeah. um, because I feel like if diversity was really a priority for my family, then I would do something about it. And I wouldn't be in this white Ballard bubble where I live and my kids go to school and I work. Um, so I guess I try to do what I can within that space. Recently, um, my health insurance just changed and um, we had to find um, our son a new doctor. And I really wanted him to have a black doctor. Yeah. And so I asked his old doctor, we used to be previous Kaiser clients, you know, about if she would make a recommendation and, and she, she couldn't think of a black doctor to recommend. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What, what were you going to say? Sometimes your only options are choosing a very racially segregated neighborhood mm -hmm. or, or if you're trying to make sure that y y your kids are with a diverse group of people, you could be part of the gentrification. It, it's like I want to make it meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to just go out and say, okay, let's, you know, find some black people to hang out with. Right. You yeah. know, right. I mean, yeah. so, it, yeah. I feel oftentimes like we're falling down on the job. It almost feels like this bind of like, okay, yes, Almost everyone in my neighborhood is, is white, um, not everybody. And, sh you know, how, but I don't want to move to the <laughs> middle and then start bring all my, 
yeah. white friends and let's, you know, that sort of white savior <laughs> complex too of like, hey, let's go change this neighborhood around. And like, it was like, okay, you just brought five Starbucks with you. Like, what, <laughs> what are you doing, you know? <laughs> One thing I always wonder, right, is that is that part of the conversation, right? Is 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 stepping up or being complicit part of the conversation with your kids? Do you teach your kids about how to have agency in situations like that? There are kids who are going to be more bullied, or there there are a lot of um, Muslim families at our school, and um, <clears throat> one of whom was yelled at across the parking lot um, for some very derogatory and horrible things about going back to their country, um, mm. and my daughter was thinking of nice things that she could say and talk to about you know with the muslim kids in their class and mm -hmm. and sort of yeah how do you come alongside right. um and show an extra bit of kindness because you can say nice words and you can be oh, comforting yeah. but in a situation where there is an instance where someone is being um, either racially discriminated against right. or mm -hmm. being hurt how do you teach your child to respond or do you teach or do you teach them to respond so like we we have family rules that like we you fight for others you work hard and, and you be kind and, and so we try to model the fighting for others like if you see something like this happening to a friend of color i hope that you'll choose to stand up i hope that you'll choose to say something do you all ever feel like i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm talking about well, all the time all the time, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just because I told her I was doing this tonight, and and um, I'm like, do you, do you think I talk to you about race like too much, or what? How do you feel? And she's like, I'm like, am I ever annoying? She's like, sometimes you're annoying. <laughs> 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 and then it made me think, like, well, what's it going to be like? As you know, they hit like the teen years, yes. and um, but at the same time, like, I think having that sort of long view with your kids is super important. Looking back now, I mean, I would right. encourage all new parents to right. start that early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think research shows kids really start having an awareness of difference right. um, earlier than that. I've talked to parents before who feel concerned that if they talk about these issues with their kids now, that they're going to make them notice race where they didn't before. Yeah, they're yeah, gonna turn them into yeah. a racist. And it, I mean, the research shows the opposite, right? So Absolutely. I just, I wish people would be more open to having the difficult conversations. Thank you all so much Thank for joining for this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you for creating this opportunity. Oh, yeah. Yeah.